Do you know what's cooler than shoving a 3 horsepower motor on a mini lathe? It's the chips that come off it. Oh did I say cool? I meant hot. Extremely hot. And that probably doesn't come as much of a surprise because machining in general tends to produce a fair amount of heat. But until now, that heat has been pretty manageable. But since adding the new motor, it started to become a bit of an issue. The deeper and faster cuts means I'm just producing a lot more heat. To give you an idea of what we're dealing with here, we can use the colour of the chips as a bit of an indicator. The colour of the oxide changes based on the temperature, and the chips that I have here range from a pale straw colour to a dark blue. And that means at some point, the temperature of those chips was close to 300 Celsius, 550 Fahrenheit, and that's saying that you really don't want landing on your skin. Not only that, but the heat of the chips has also melted my way cover, which isn't exactly helpful. My cutting tools are also suffering a little bit. I know the carbide can handle the heat, but I know it isn't performing as well as it should be, and I've managed to burn up a few high speed steel cutters. I have been manually applying coolant and cutting paste, but there are better ways of doing it. Now the most obvious answer is just to install some sort of coolant system. This is the flood coolant that I installed on my mill last year, and for a mill this size it was 100% overkill, but when it comes to keeping parts and cutting tools as cool as possible, this is the best solution. And as a result, I've seen some of my cutting tools easily last 4 or 5 times as long as they did before. And that's pretty useful considering that end mills aren't as straightforward to sharpen as lathe tools, and an end mill can start at 20 or 30 bucks and up. However, it must be said that the mill is more conducive to a flood coolant setup. It has gutters and it has drainage ports, so it can easily collect and recycle the coolant without spilling all that much. The lathe, however, or especially my lathe, isn't really set up for a flood coolant. Yes, I could modify it, and it really wouldn't be the craziest modification that I've ever done, but I think there is a much easier approach, and that would be to add a mist coolant. Now for a misting setup, you really only need three things. You need an air compressor, a mister nozzle, and coolant. And I have most of those things. So you're probably wondering why I've gone out and bought an airbrush and a compressor. Man, this thing is so small, it's ridiculous. Now the reason why I bought this air compressor was to compress air. Okay, the real question is, why did I buy this one, considering that I already own a much bigger air compressor? Now what I have here is one of those cheap generic box store air compressors. I probably bought this one 5 or 6 years ago for a bit under 100 bucks. And you know what, for 100 bucks, I really can't complain all that much. It works as an air compressor, you can get a lot of PSI out of it, but the fact is, the air compressor is just a little bit slow, and the fact is, I never use it all that often. I might use it every few months, but I simply prefer to vacuum up my parts, then hit them with compressed air. So that begs the question, well, why did I buy the other one? Well, I bought this one because... It makes hardly any noise at all. The biggest issue I have with this one is the noise. It's rated at 73 decibels, which is hearing protection levels of noise. And the last thing I want is this in the background of every video making a huge racket. And that's why I bought the smaller one. It's quieter, which is a lot easier for me when it comes to editing. I did look at getting a bigger silenced compressor to replace this one, but unfortunately it wasn't in the budget and I simply don't use air tools enough to justify it. Now the fact that it also included a kit airbrush was just a bonus. And you know what, for the price that I paid, the quality of the airbrush wasn't too bad. To my surprise, it's dual action, so pushing down on the top will activate the air blast, 
and pulling back on the lever will pull back the needle and that will allow you to adjust the spray of the paint, or in my case, the coolant. Overall, for a kit airbrush, I'm pretty impressed with the quality. Now the reason why I'm showing you this kit airbrush is because I'm thinking of adapting it to work as the misting system itself. I saw this done a few years ago on the Tiger Moth Racing YouTube channel and it seemed to work really well there. I might as well try and use it and see if it works and if it doesn't work I can always go out and buy a proper misting system. All I really wanted from this was the air compressor. Now the first thing I want to do is see if I can actually make it work. So I'll change out the glass bottle for a longer hose. The plan will be to run it from a much bigger reservoir since these bottles only hold about 30 mils of coolant. And thankfully some 3mm tubing attaches really tightly. I've rigged up a quick stand from a universal mount and a mag base. And thankfully it only takes about 15 or 20 psi to get the whole thing working. Now this might not seem like much, but this was a critical step, because the airflow that it needed to work needs to be lower than what the compressor can manage to compress or else I wouldn't be able to use it for long periods of time without stopping to let the pump catch up. The compressor is rated for 15 litres of air per minute and thankfully it takes less to run this setup. With that sorted, let's find a place to house it. I decided to house it in the cabinet which is below the workbench. That'll keep it out of the way and more importantly, it'll keep it away from the camera and the microphone. And rather conveniently, there's a space which is the perfect size for the compressor. Now the cabinet here is just an old IKEA workbench, and that's made primarily from folded sheet metal. So pulling it apart and drilling a few holes in the side panel in order to route the power and the air hose wasn't too difficult. And that looks pretty good to me. Now the cabinet does an okay job of absorbing some of the sound, but what I might do in the future is add some sound deadening foam to further reduce the noise. Next I'll make the reservoir for the coolant. Nothing too fancy, just 15 bucks worth of PVC. Now to cut the PVC, I'm going to use the life hack that I was shown a few years ago. You simply wrap a piece of paper around so that it's straight around the PVC and then you tape it up. Doing it this way gets you a pretty straight cut but I really wouldn't want to do it if I was cutting more than one or two cuts. And a bit of PVC cement should keep it all together and it should make it all watertight. In the top I'll drill a hole and that will allow me to screw in a retaining insert for the hose. The insert grips pretty tightly on the outside of the hose and that will help it keep it in place. 
and a bit of Velcro on another piece of PVC should be enough to hold it all in place. Now because this is a dual action airbrush, I'll need the top to be permanently pushed down to allow the air to flow. And a bit of epoxy should do the trick. I just have to first remove that chrome layer because the glue won't stick to it. The final thing left to do is mix up some coolant. I'm sure most work just fine, but the one that I'm going to be using is XDP 1800. It's a semi-synthetic, water-soluble oil, and what I found is a 20 to 1 mix with water is generally good enough. And the reservoir holds just under a litre of coolant, which should be plenty enough for this setup. For the final setup, I've decided to keep it connected to the mag base because it allows me to quickly swap it in and out and very easily adjust the setup. Now because I have the airbrush permanently turned on, I'll have to use a ball valve in order to turn it on and off. Unfortunately though, the ball valve hasn't turned up yet, but when it does turn up, I'll add it to the setup. And with very careful alignment, the coolant is being sprayed directly onto the workpiece, with only just enough coolant being used to keep the part cool. And in fact I'm using so little coolant that I should be able to go weeks or even months between filling up the reservoir. And because I'm only using a very small amount of oil mixed in with the water, it should only cost about one or two bucks every time I refill up the reservoir. And thankfully, even though we're only using a small amount of coolant, the workpiece and the chips that are coming off are a lot cooler, and that should protect me and the new way cover. On a final note, I do want to point out that I'm being very careful with how I position and direct the coolant, so that all of the coolant is sprayed directly onto the part. I've said many times in the past that I'm really not the biggest fan of mist cooling because of the mist that will build up in the workshop and you really don't want to be breathing any of that stuff in. They're really best used with enclosures and that really means CNC machines. Running it with an enclosure means you can use an extraction fan and filter. And even though this setup works really well, it is undeniable that there is a tiny bit of mist building up. Thankfully though, the solution was pretty simple and that was to fit a small bit of tubing that will help collect the mist and turn it into a very controlled stream of coolant. And that seemed to work really great too. So what I might do in the future is fit a custom long nozzle to the airbrush and that will help better control the mist. That might need to wait a little bit because the threads on this are M5.5 by 0.5 and I'm going to have to wait for a custom tap to turn up because my lathe struggles to do any pictures smaller than 0.07mm. The final thing left for me to do is vacuum up all the chips with the wet and dry shop vac, and because there's so little coolant used, there isn't really all that much coolant left on the lathe or the chips. And any time I use coolant on the lathe or the mill, I always give it a spray of WD-40 or anything similar. You probably don't have to, considering that the coolant has rust inhibitors, but I just do it for a little bit of peace of mind. And there you have it. Definitely not the most straightforward approach, but it was definitely the best setup that worked for me, given the budget, the workspace, and the noise limitations that I was working with. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week.